What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about Love Lies Bleeding. Directed by Rose Glass who wrote this film alongside Veronica Tolfilska. This film stars people like Kristen Stewart, Katie O'Brien, Dave Franco, Jenna Malone, Ed Harris and more. So here we are now talking about a new A24 film, a film that I was really intrigued to see when I first saw a lot of the marketing for this film, just because of the talent that's on display on camera. And just something about this film just seemed strange and up my alley in a weird, dramatic way. And A24 is just one of those studios that if I can watch something they release, I'm all in. And you never know what to expect from them. You can either get one of the most ingenious, completely beautifully made films that's artistic and weird and stylish, or you can get something that's a slog, that's slow, that's boring, that's really artistic and abstract, but maybe isn't really up your alley, but will have a cult following. They're one of those great studios that gives us tons of great films every year, or at least films that are noteworthy when it comes to talking about them. So here we are talking about Love Lies Bleeding, which focuses primarily on characters played by Kristen Stewart and Katie O'Brien. And before I get into them and what this movie's all about without getting into spoilers, of course, I just want to talk about those two actresses because Kristen Stewart is somebody I've had a lot of respect for as an actress since I first saw her in Panic Room with Jodie Foster. And of course, she'd later go on to have this big career with the Twilight films, but She's an actress that I've seen in so many films before Twilight and after Twilight that I've really enjoyed. And that middle portion of her career is one that I'm not a huge fan of personally, but it's nice to see her in a movie like this where she can really showcase really strong acting chops. Now, when it comes to Katie O'Brien, I've only seen her in three things, and those things are Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania from last year, as well as two shows like The Mandalorian and Black Lightning. And in The Mandalorian and Black Lightning, she plays two characters that are very similar kind of officer type roles that are very serious and by the book and are abiding by a specific you know kind of code and she always just kind of felt like an annoying role for me in those stories i never was a huge fan of her characters i thought her performances were fine but i wasn't ever blown away and so i was excited to see this movie because she's one of those actresses who has a really defined look and the fact that she was playing the really jacked badass character in this movie really intrigued me to hopefully see another side of her as an actress. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get into what this movie is all about. The movie opens up and we're introduced to Kristen Stewart character who is known as Lou. She's addicted to cigarettes and kind of down on her luck in life lately. She's kind of just sleeping around and drinking and she works at this gym and just doesn't really love her life. She's not taking the best care of herself. And we learn pretty quickly that she has some tragedy that's happened in her family and a lot of trauma that has happened in her family. And most of that really comes specifically from her father, played by Ed Harris in this film, who plays Lou Sr., who has a sweet hairdo in this movie and is essentially the leader of some crime organization he's got some cops that he pays to keep hush and she being raised under him really struggled as she got older and of course he kind of put her into some tight situations manipulated her and just kind of built a life of trauma that's now led to her not necessarily being in the best place as an adult all these years later her sister in the film is played by Jenna Malone, her character's name is Beth, and Beth is in an abusive relationship with her husband, played by Dave Franco, uh, who's known as JJ. And so Kristen Stewart's character kind of just sticks around to help her sister out. She doesn't care for her dad, she doesn't want to talk to him. She hates JJ, of course, because he abuses her sister. And so the only thing really holding her together is her care and her love for her sister in this abusive relationship where her sister tends to, like in a lot of abusive relationships, side with her husband and say oh it's a misunderstanding whatever the case may be then we get to get introduced to katie o'brien's character who is a hitchhiker who's a bodybuilder who's really excited about a big bodybuilding competition that's coming up real soon they end up building a bond both kristen stewart and katie o'brien's character it gets pretty hot and sexy really quickly and the movie is instantly into this romance right out of the gate that's fueled by sex and steroids and bodybuilding and cigarettes and drinking and all kinds of crazy stuff like that and not too long into the film when Kristen Stewart's sister in the film is abused by Dave Franco's character to a really big level 
Things start to get a little bit crazy. It's the big inciting incident in the film. And what ensues in the rest of the film is a steroid and sex-fueled film that is tension-filled and filled with tons of violence and revenge. And I'll leave it at that. The best way I can really describe this film is it's a perfect balance of sexy and grimy. And I think for the most part, when it comes down to the tone of the film, the cinematography, and the performances, they all lend themselves to really helping with that tone. And I think the director of this film who also wrote it, Rose Glass, had a solid vision when it came to this film, and clearly that was passed down to Katie O'Brien and Kristen Stewart and the rest of the cast as they all give phenomenal performances that feel grounded while also feeling abstract in moments. If I had to lean into any negatives here for this review, I would say that my biggest gripes with the film were that at the very beginning of the film, the romance that does blossom between Kristen Stewart and Katie O'Brien felt a little bit rushed to me. It felt like they were trying to just get that romance rolling. It was like, hey, you saw the trailer, you see that there's two women that fall in love and that something starts to get crazy well let's just get to them being in love and sleeping with each other pretty fast so we can get to the nitty-gritty and once the movie started picking up beyond that initial kind of rushed beginning for me I just found myself really invested in what was going on. As I just mentioned, it's a really tension-filled film that as it continues on, it continues to build and build and build with more moments of surprising moments as well as some just anxiety-inducing moments where you're really wondering how the characters are gonna get in or out of this situation. This is a film with a lot of characters who are grimy and crime-ridden and are addicted to something, have their own vices, have their own secrets. So you don't never really know who to fully root for, but it is one of those things where you're kind of watching a train wreck just going down and you just can't look away. Outside of that gripe of it feeling a little bit rushed near the beginning of the film, the very end of the film is rather abstract is the best way I can kind of put it. There's the way that they chose to end the film, specifically one of the final sequences in the film was a little bit strange and was probably one of the only things that made me really scratch my head as the movie was progressing. Overall, I found it to be very well shot, very well acted and very well put together when it comes down to the editing. And there's a great use of practical effects and locations throughout the course of the film as well. And so I was really enjoying the film up to a specific choice that Again, the best way I can describe it is abstract. It's a very large decision that was made near the end of the film. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. If you have not seen the film, I'm going to keep it, you know, a little bit hidden to you guys. So you guys can go and check it out and get your own opinion on it. But overall, what I can say about Love Lies Bleeding is what I said before. It strikes a solid balance of sex, heat, and grimy. It's crime-ridden. It's revenge-ridden. It's got some really solid performances at the center of it. It's got subject matter and an overall story that I can't necessarily say I would revisit visit often, but it is a movie that I felt was very well made and I had a good time watching it. And so far, even though we still are very early into the year and there's some great films to come down the line, it's definitely amongst my favorite films that I've seen here in 2024 so far with some of the strongest performances. And it made me excited to see Kristen Stewart in a role again that's just really great and mentally separates me from that portion of her career that I wasn't crazy about. And for somebody like Katie O'Brien, who I've even seen in my favorite franchise, Star Wars, and I wasn't crazy about her in any of the roles I've ever seen her in. I was really, really into her here. I thought she did a great job and she got fucking jacked. I mean, I gotta give the chick absolute props. She's in good shape and all of those other things that she does. So clearly she's really into fitness, but in this role, she got jacked. I mean, the woman is showing off muscles throughout the course of the film and I gotta give credit where credit is due. Katie O'Brien put in the work in the gym for sure for this role and you know, kudos to her for the hard work she put in to get to the physique that this film needed for her role in this movie. So that's going to be my thoughts on Love Lies Bleeding. Can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about it. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Whatever the case may be, leave any and all comments down below. And I'll see you beautiful people in the next one. Bye-bye.